so hello friends now in medicine we are starting with the next topic that is disseminated intravascular coagulation from the internal medicine book hyson so first we will discuss about the causes the first cause is sepsis okay it includes bacterial viral mycotic parasitic or rickettsial okay either of the sepsis then immunological disorder may lead to dic that is acute hemolysis transfusion reaction organ or tissue transplant rejection or graft versus host disease now the third is your trauma and tissue injury that may include brain injury, extensive bones, fat embolism, rhabdomyolysis. Then use of the drugs such as phimulatic agents, aproteinin, okay, warfarin, then prothrombin complex concentrates, recreational drugs such as amphetamines. Okay, so that all will lead to the DIC. The next is your environment, okay, such as snake or insects, then obstetrical complications such as abruptio placenti, amniotic fluid embolism, dead fetus syndrome, and septic abortion. Now, liver diseases such as hepatic failure, cirrhosis, and fatty liver of the pregnancy all are leading to the DIC. Cancer can also lead to DIC that may include adenocarcinoma as well as hematological malignancy and the miscellaneous causes are shock, respiratory distress syndrome, and massive transfusion. So, these are the overall uh, causes behind the DIC. Okay, starting with sepsis, immunological disorders, trauma, drugs, then your uh, Invenomation, then obstetrical complication, then liver disease, cancer, and miscellaneous. Now, what is the pathophysiology of DIC? So, DIC is uh, due to uncontrolled thrombin generation, and that will lead to 5 in deposition in uh, microcirculation and increased consumption of platelets and coagulation factor. Okay, so there will be first increased consumption of platelets and coagulation factor. Okay, now due to increased consumption of uh, coagulation factors and platelets okay there will be decrease in their amount one more thing due to uh, with, as we have discussed here okay five in deposits in microcirculation that uh, may lead to ischemic tissue damage and ischemic tissue damage that may cause failure of the multiple organs now secondary five losses will start such as vessel patency diffuse bleeding and edp d dimer okay fdp or d dimer will be there then red blood cell damage and hemolysis will be there due to dic okay, so this is basic pathophysiology now interleukin 6 and tnf alpha play central roles in mediating coagulation defects in dic we will discuss pathophysiology in different pathology video okay, we are concentrating mainly on the treatment and clinical picture because this is a medicinal video okay so interleukin 6 and tnf alpha play central role in mediating coagulation defects in dic so what are the clinical features so bleeding ranging from oozing from penny punctured sites or petechi ecmoasis to severe hemorrhagic form such as git bleeding lung bleeding or cns bleeding will be there in chronic DIC, bleeding symptoms are discrete and restricted to skin or mucosal surfaces. Mortality ranges from 30 to 40 percent, 30 to 80 percent. Now, what is the diagnosis? So, you will perform CBC, APTT, PTT, then markers of fibrin degradation products. That is FTP. We have discussed FTP here also. Okay. So, markers of fibrin degradation products. That is FTP. Okay. So, these are the test in peripheral smear. Peripheral smear. You can also observe. Now, this test should be repeated over a period of 6 to 8 hours because an initially mild abnormality can change dramatically into a severe form. Now, increased PT, APTT will be there, plated count less than this, there will be cystocytosis on peripheral blood smear and increased FTP level. And this, the last one, that is increased FTP level, this is the most sensitive test for DIC. This is generally asked me a question. Okay, most sensitive test for DIC is FTP level. Now, there is another D dimer. So it is more specific for reduction of fibrin, but not fibrinogen degradation product. This is for fibrinogen de degradation product. This is for fibrin, and indicate that cross-linked fibrin has been digested by plasmid. Okay, so you can also perform D dimer test. Now differential diagnosis. So DIC and severe liver disease. You have to differentiate that that the disease is due to any liver problem or that is DIC. So in liver disease, you will encounter, may encounter thrombocytopenia, decrease in of coagulation factor also, increase FDP level due to reduce hepatic clearance. Clear. There will be also maybe presence of partial hypertension or other liver diseases. And in contrast to DIC, these lab parameters in liver disease don't change rapidly. Okay. In DIC, these parameters change very rapidly. But in liver disease, these parameters do not change rapidly. And one more thing, in liver disease, there will be maybe portal hypertension or other liver disease. So on the basis of this, you can easily make a differential diagnosis so what is the treatment for this so morbidity and mortality as so with dic are primarily related to underlying disease rather than amplification of dic so the control or elimination of underlying cause should therefore be the primary concern clear the second point that patient with severe dic require control of hemodynamic parameters respiratory support and sometimes surgery 
now management of hemorrhagic symptoms so if mark thrombocytopenia that is greater than 10000 or 20000 then it will require replacement therapy replacement with fresh and clothed plasma is indicated because one unit increase coagulation factor by 3% low level of fibrinogen will also require infusion of crypto precipitate okay plasma fraction increased for fibrinogen factor 8 and one volume factor and replacement of coagulation or fibrinolysis interest can also be given such as fibrin, heparin, ESEA, tranexamic acid and protein C concentrate. So this is all about your DIC. So thank you.